Well, hello there. How are you? Good, I'm glad to hear it. I'm doing well also. As a matter of fact, I've just had a visit by the district nurse. She took some blood, did blood pressure, temperature, all the usual stuff, you know. And I'll know the results of all of these tests next week. I'm dreaming now that the tests are going to say, I can be paroled. <laughs> Am I dreaming? I don't know. But anyway, it's nice to have the dream, isn't it? And speaking of dreams, I think it's time now for another escape because I'm ready. This is my 15th week. This is my 15th, 15 weeks I've been in quarantine and isolation. 15 weeks. That's almost like a life sentence, isn't it? Anyway. So I want to do something different. Now, there's an old saying. There are old pilots and there are bold pilots but there are no old, bold pilots. Hmm. I think you see what the meaning is of that, but I think I'd like to challenge that. And I want to be an old pilot, there's a bold pilot, and do something extraordinary. Now, when I was flying, because, you know, I am a commercial pilot, when I was flying, I flew propeller airplanes, I flew DC, threes, C-47s, cargo. I flew cargo. Uh, sometimes I flew a DC-6, which is a bigger plane, but most of the time I was in the C-47. And in the C-47, there's a lot of difference to these modern aeroplanes. For one thing, the instrumentation. Uh, I could pick up a VOR if there was a VOR anywhere where I was flying. I was lucky if there was a radio station I could tune into and then fly the needle on the ADF. So things were a lot different, a lot different in those days. There is a procedure called the RNAV approach. Now, I didn't do any RNAVs, even when I did my IFR. Uh, what I did for the IFR rate, uh, rating was to do an ILS approach and then to do a back ILS approach. And uh, probably there's a few other things too, but those are the two that I remember. There was no such thing as an RNAV in those days. So I decided I think I'd like to try an RNAV approach somewhere. Now, I used to fly in and out of Brazil, but not in Rio. I've not never landed actually in Rio. Commercially I have, but not. Uh, I haven't actually flown a plane into Rio. But there are two principal airports there. There's the Galileo, which is the main airport. It's on an island in the bay. And then there's the older one, which is more military than anything else. And that's the Santos Dumont Airport. The interesting thing about the Santos Dumont Airport is the procedure for landing at either runway 02 left or 02 right was to actually swing over the buildings. You came in over the city to make the landing. And the landing had to be, well, you had to be pretty good because uh, the runway 02 left is 4,134 feet. Runway 02 right, a little bit longer, is 4,341 feet. Now, if I was flying a C-47 into that, there's more than enough room to land. But there's a difference between a C-47 and a 737-800. For one thing, the maximum takeoff weight of a C-47 is 31,000 pounds, or it's about 14 metric tons. And your landing speed is about 55 knots. 
So you make your approach about 50, descend to 60, and you touch down at 55. A 737 is a little different. Its maximum landing weight is 144,000 pounds, or 65 metric tons. And the landing speed is somewhere around about 130, 135 knots. I often tried to imagine what it would be like for those tires. They're at a stationary point, not revolving at all, and suddenly the tires hit the tarmac on that runway, at, and then they suddenly go into 135 miles an hour with 60 five metric tons of weight behind them. That's an awful lot of pressure, awful lot of impact on those tires. Hmm. But anyway, back to the RNAV. There's an interesting new RNAV approach going into runway zero to right. And it's the RNAV X. So let's, let's go ahead and do that today because it's a nice challenge and it takes a bold pilot to do it who's never done our navs and, or anything like that. So you want to join this old bold pilot in a, in a nice tricky little maneuver? Oh, you say yes, okay, good. Well then let's go ahead and do it. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to, this is by the way is a Google map of the bay. So we're going to be parked right here at the end of runway 10 at Galileo Airport. Our destination is going to be this little airport down here just across the bay. Not that far away is it? So to get there we're going to Depart on runway 10 and we're going to go out and we're going to follow then this route. Now this is the route, this is the flight plan that I've got in my uh, Navigraph chart. You can see where the dotted line goes and the first waypoint there is UTMIP. So we go direct to UTMIP which is a waypoint we turn right and then we go to Isval, which is another waypoint. And then we continue on to Evria. Now Evria is an important point. If you were to execute a missed approach from Santos Dumont, it takes you out to Evria. And there's where the holding pattern is to take place. And the Evria waypoint requires 5,500 feet. So we're going to go to Evria, 5,500 feet, turn right, and then we're going to go to Popsu, which is this point at the bottom. Now Popsu is the initial approach fix for Santos Dumont. At Popsu we will actually be descending through 5,000 feet uh, in order to get down to 2,000 feet, which is at the next waypoint. But at Popsu, which is the IAF, or the initial approach fix, we will need to be at flaps 5, speed brake will have to be armed, cabin uh, preparations for landing or completed. We'll have to make some adjustments in the progress page to go and put in the RNP value of 0.1. And that, that's an important uh, calculation that the FMC must have. Also, on the first officer's side, we're going to need to have the profile for the landing and also set his distance to two and a half miles. So 
will be able to see very precise our approach. Now a real live airline pilot going into Santos Dumont on this approach will use the heads up screen. Now the heads up screen is very useful because you'll be able to not only see the instrumentation, the critical instrumentation, but you can see through it to see where you're going to land. The thing about the heads up screen is that there will be a circle on there and that circle is controlled by the flight director and you need to fly that keeping the another little bubble in the middle of it and that will take you straight down this particular route. I unfortunately do not have a heads up display in my simulator so I'm going to have to fly the fly director on the main instrument panel so it's going to be rather interesting and very busy. Anyway from Popsu I'm descending down to RJ222 which is my next waypoint and that happens to be the intermediate fix. At that point I have to be at 2000 feet. Flaps will be full, the gear will be down, the engine switches are on continuous, the MCP heading will be changed to 019 which is the heading for the approach, the final approach, and the MCP altimeter will have to be changed to 5500 because that is what's required in case I had to execute a missed approach. The next waypoint is RJ809 and at this point that's the FAP, that's the final approach point. I will have to do the landing checklist and at that particular time I'm going to disengage the autopilot and I'm going to fly it in. That's why I said I'm going to be a bold pilot, an old bold pilot on this one. And you will hear me say, I have control. <laughs> That's a good one. I hope I will. But anyway, I will say, I have control. <laughs> and then at RJ808, which is the next waypoint, then the speed will need to be 135 knots. And I have to maintain that speed then all the way down. The final point is RJ804. That's the minimum height, that's the decision height, and it will be 305 feet above sea level. The runway elevation is 9 feet above sea level. Now, Santos Dumont, in case you were wondering, is just a little spit that sticks out into the bay. Its runway begins on the beach and ends on the other beach. So you're landing directly from water onto the tarmac and if you are not airborne uh, or at a full stop landing by the time you get to the end of this 4,000 foot runway then you will be a new flotation device in the bay. So you've got 65 tons of aeroplane coming in at 135 nautical miles an hour, going to touch down on a short runway, full flaps, and hopefully come to a stop before you get to the end of the runway. Of course, if you don't make it, if I don't make it, then I suppose you could start to call me Sully and imagine that I was landing on the Hudson River. <laughs> By the way, that was a brilliant landing. That was an A320 he was flying. Not one loss of life. Absolutely brilliant landing. Absolutely brilliant. But I'm not going to be doing any water landings today. I promise. So there's my route. 
and I've got my chart. Here's the, here's the chart. Can you see that? And the chart's got all the information in it. And I'm going to be flying this. So here you can see it on this chart. There's the Popsu. There's the RJ222. And then the RJ809. And then you can see the very interesting little twist as it comes in to take you into the landing. And why is that dot leg there, do you ask? It's because of Sugarloaf Mountain. Now, if you've ever been to Rio de Janeiro, there is that little mountain at the entrance to the bay, and it's called Sugarloaf Mountain. Nice little mountain. You can take a cable car and go all the way to the top. Lovely view from that point. But you have to go around the mountain over a little bit of spit of land. By the way, that triggers uh, every time. That triggers the uh, proximity warning in the cop. But then I've got to swing around, and I'll be doing this manually at that point, swing around, bringing it in, and coming into a touchdown. Hopefully, I will be landing on the runway. Now, for preparations, I've got to set everything up for a flight altitude that's going to be 5,500 feet. My block fuel is going to be 3.2 tons, 3,200 kilograms of fuel. Um, the total flight distance is 83 miles. All this will have to be entered into the FMC. Now this, where you see the routing here on this page, that's exactly what I'm going to be putting into my Navigraph. And that then will make the lines and show the exact route of my approach. So that is my flight. Let me show you the airport. Now this is the airport at Galileo. I'm going to be parked right there at the threshold to runway 10. That's going to be my starting point. I will already have the engines uh, started when I start the film because this is a short flight. By the way, I'm going to be fully loaded. Every seat is sold out. It must be the fact that Ryanair offers free champagne and caviar. I don't know. But anyway, I will have a full loaded aeroplane. I will have a half a ton of cargo in the belly underneath as well. And here is the runway at Santos Dumont. You can see what I mean about the edge of the runway and right on the water. And when I come in, I need to land on the one on the right because the one on the left is considerably shorter. So I need to make sure I've got the right one there. And then I will taxi from the active runway and I will be parking along one of those stands. Right. Well, if you're ready, I am. So come and join me in the cockpit, why don't you? And let's see if we can do this. The old bold pilot flies again. <laughs> Week 15 of quarantine and I have a new challenge. Arnav X at to Santos Dumont Airport, 02 right at Rio de Janeiro. What could be better? Hello there. This is your captain speaking. <laughs> I always wanted to say that. As you can see, we're Ryanair 186 and we're parked right on the runway, runway number 10 at Galileo Airport in Rio de Janeiro. 
and we're just going to go about 80 miles to land at another airport at the Santos Dumont Airport on runway 02 right. And it's that tricky little thing around the mountain that we have to navigate. So we're going to see how we do. Everything is set up. We've been given our clearance to depart. So all the lights are on. Engines continuous. Attendants secure the cabin for takeoff. Right. The before takeoff engine bleeds on correct start switch is continuous cabin is secure right before takeoff checklist is complete so let's see how we do shall we so buckle up and here we go advance the power to N1 N1 power and toga. V1. V1. V2. Rotate. Positive rate, gear up, going to autopilot. Gear is off, no lights. checklist after takeoff checklist is complete and we'll set the flight director to 19 degrees and we'll turn this on to 172 in preparation for the turn coming up. to land and we're at our assigned altitude of 5,500 feet and we are clean time is 0647 local time Six. Did you hear my last transmission? Made right downwind, runway to right, Ryanair 186. And now we're making our turn at the first waypoint.
sorry about the frame rate on the screen. That's, uh, I have a, I need to put a second computer on. And one day I shall. Air Force One Niner Zero is one zero miles south inbound visual runway two left approach. Air Force One Niner Zero Rio Tower make straight in runway two left altimeter one zero one three. Make straight in runway two left Air Force One Niner Zero. One minor zero clear to land runway two left. Clear to land runway two left Air Force One Niner Zero. American Pacific 1410 at runway 2 left, ready for takeoff IFR 2 Congoners. American Pacific 1410 hold short, runway 2 left, traffic is experimental on final. Hold short, runway 2 left, American Pacific 1410. approach fix, the IAF. on our top of descent. Rio Tower, Air Force One Niner Zero is going missed. Air Force One Niner Zero contact Rio de Janeiro approach on one one minor point zero. One one Niner point zero, Air Force One Niner Zero. Flap one. American Pacific one four one zero cleared for takeoff runway to left. Cleared for takeoff, runway two left, American Pacific 
descent has commenced. Descent checklist. Seatbelt signs on. Check. Recall. Check. Auto brake. It is set number three. Landing data is all checked and we will American Pacific 1410 contact Rio de Janeiro departure on 11.0 one one approach briefing is 11.0 one one American Pacific 1410 descent checklist is complete flaps 2 American Pacific 1344 is 10 zero miles south inbound visual runway to left approach. American Pacific 1344 Rio Tower make straight in runway to left altimeter 1013. Fly straight in runway to left American Pacific 1344. Landing gear switches, check, and seatbelt signs, recall check, altimeter check, navigate check. And the approach checklist is complete. American Pacific 1344 clear to land runway to left Clear to land runway to left American Pacific 1344 And there's Sugarloaf Mountain up ahead at the entrance to the bay We're coming up on RJ222, which is our intermediate fix.
and on the approach Gear is down, flaps down. Three green lights. Landing checklist is complete. Runway is in sight. American Pacific 1344, turn next taxiway. It is now 0700 hours in Rio. And we're coming in to intercept the Descent slope. American Pacific 1344, four. contact ground on 121.7. 121.7. American Pacific 1344. Four. Clear to land, runway to right. Clear to land, runway to right, Ryanair 186. We have our clearance, all lights on, attendance secure for landing. Sugarloaf Mountain here. Thank 
Don't see. Don't see. Twenty ten. Exit runway when able. Yes, indeed. Clean up complete. Flaps up. Ryanair one eight six contact ground on one two one point seven. Going to one two one point seven Ryanair one eight six. Rio ground, Ryanair 186, taxi to the gate. Ryanair 186, taxi to gate 17, via taxiway Alpha Juliet. Taxiing to gate 17, using taxiway Alpha Juliet, Ryanair 186. Certainly an interesting landing. Not at all the easiest. Okay, where are we going? I see, that's where they want us to go. on, APU is on, lights off, no smoking off, seat Rio off. Brown, Air Force 190, request taxi to the gate, Air Force 190, Sugar. taxi to gate 90, via taxiway, Alpha Juliet, taxiing to gate 90, using taxiway, Alpha Juliet, Air Force 190, Door is open and the hatch is coming down. Ah, and all my passengers are rushing to get off. I can't imagine why. Okay, we'll go through the shutdown. IRS is off. Your damper is off. Window heat is off. Probes are off. Hydraulic pumps are off. Air conditioning is off. Navigation lights are off. Landing lights are all off. Emergency lights are off. Galley is off. APU bleed is off. APU is off. Fuel pumps are off. Battery is off. Shutdown is complete. 